Hello friends and family, this is Megan Moon, aka Chal Nidmi Gukserem Imidang And we are here in me and Mr. Moon's not that beautiful kitchen Sorry for the lack of aesthetics today, we are filming at home So I am currently 29 weeks pregnant with twins So you guys know that prior to pregnancy, I was doing competitions and into fitness, and I've shared things that I eat in my fitness routine before, and you guys have wondered since being pregnant, how has that changed? So I'm going to show you what I eat in a day. Let's get started. So the biggest thing that has changed in my diet is I literally either bake and or air fry everything, honey, because I have zero energy to be sitting at that stove and babysitting food. So I don't wanna be standing over the stove like this doing stuff, okay? It's very tiring. So what happens is, I'll do something here. I'll move over to this seat right here and then sit down, out of breath. And then I look at it, is it ready? I don't know. Then I gotta stand up and then come over here and then check it again. That's not for me at the moment. So I've been making a lot of things that go well in the refrigerator, topping up things and portioning it, putting it in the freezer. And instead of focusing on making every single meal, I pre-make meals, take them out, reheat them up, meal prep for you. So let's talk about breakfast. So you guys know that prior to pregnancy, I didn't really eat breakfast. I just kind of got up, maybe drank some water, went to the gym, and then always ate my first meal after I went to the gym. But when you're pregnant and you have all of these babies taking up space in your body, your stomach gets like really smushed and it gets like pushed way over here. So what happens is you always feel full. It's so random because you feel full, but then you're also really hungry at the same time. So how does that happen? And if you do happen to eat too much, you get so bloated and it gets so horrible. So I have to eat very small meals spaced out over the day. I've started eating breakfast every single day. And you guys know, cause I've talked about it before, every morning, I don't know why, but I have to have egg and avocado in some way, shape or form with my Louisiana hot sauce. Breakfast is always either some sort of omelet or a scrambled egg or like some sort of frittata. I just do 12 eggs, a third a cup of milk, throw whatever veggies I want, pop it in the oven at 350 for 30 minutes, and then it's done. You cut it, you freeze it, you're done. You got breakfast. Oh, these are the pre-made frittatas. So I'm gonna take it, plate it with some veggies, avocado, a little bit of fruit, and boom, you got breakfast in like a minute. And now for the secret ingredient, Louisiana hot sauce. I'm from the South, y'all. Can't take the South out of the girl. That's why I'm in South Korea too. Hot sauce, yeah. Mm. This is actually a Korean citrus fruit called Red Hang, Red Hang. It's only available for like two months out of the year and grown in one area. It is the best orange you will ever have in your life. And I can only eat about this much food at a time. It looks like a lot, but I mean, salad is not that dense. This is, you know, not that heavy. It's really not a big meal, but don't fret because I will eat again in maybe one and a half to two hours. So then after breakfast, I typically go to the gym and after my workout, I like to have a nice protein shake. Baby Booster, we are not sponsored by Baby Booster, but I love this. It's a pregnant woman protein shake and it's nice because it has no artificial anythings or colors or preservatives, soy free, and they make sure they check it for heavy metals, which is why it's safe and okay for a pregnant woman to use. And it's really nice because it has folate in it. It has like vitamin B12 and stuff in it as well. One of the things that they promote is that it helps to soothe the morning sickness because it has a lot of the B vitamins in it, which helps with morning sickness and it's kind of soft on the stomach. So a lot of Women, when they're having morning sickness, they were taking this and this is actually how I found it. I'll either just mix it with my teamy greens or my water or my favorite plant milk and then I have like some fruit with it on the side or I'll take the fruit, freeze it, throw it together and then have some sort of smoothie. But today we are just going to have the protein shake separate and have the bowl of fruits and Greek yogurt, which is one of my favorite post-workout snacks. But you guys know that I love my sweet potatoes. <laughs> So sometimes I'll have a protein shake and I'll have a few sweet potatoes with peanut butter. Sweet potatoes and peanut butter goes extremely well together. Okay, don't knock it till you try it. So one thing that I love for a snack as a post-workout meal is baked oatmeal. More specifically, baked 
banana bread overnight oatmeal. Okay, it's so good, it tastes like cake. And the thing that I love about it is that you can just bake a whole bunch, chop it up into portions, put it in Ziploc bags, pop it in the freezer, and just pull one out and nuke it whenever you wanna eat it. So convenient. But then sometimes I eat like two or three portions at once because I'm like, well, it's there and I can just heat it up. So maybe sometimes it's not a good idea to have so many portions at once. But it's very simple to make. It's a recipe that I just found online and I love it. So let me show you how I make it. I'm gonna take my nanners and mash them up. Ideally, they would be a lot more spotted and a lot more brown. Get you some nice, super ripe bananas. Oh my God, it's so not ripe. The skin is like still thick. Use the potato masher. Yeah, the potato masher is bending. Then I'm going to add my other wet ingredients. At this point, it doesn't really matter what order you put it in. As long as you put all the wet ingredients first. And then put the oats last. Get my good old allulose. Allulose is the only like not sugar sweetener that doesn't have any weird taste at all. It just tastes exactly like sugar, but like slightly like caramelized sugar is so nice. Fourth cup, perfect. One teaspoon of baking powder. Boop. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. You can actually just flavor it however you want with whatever like spices that you want. Half teaspoon of nutmeg. You could probably use just all spice in place of all of these things too. That would be pretty good. A little ginger, make like a gingerbread one. Four teaspoons of salt. One teaspoon of vanilla. Boop. Oh, it smells so good. So I typically like to let it sit overnight and then bake it in the morning because I find that the oats are much like softer and easier to digest. But for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna bake it right away. If you do let it sit overnight and bake it in the morning, you only need to bake it for like 30 minutes, but if you bake it right away, you need to bake it for 40 to 45 minutes. My arm is hurting. Add your two eggs. Whisk it all up. And lastly, you're just gonna pop in your oats. Get it. Get it in the oven. 350F or 180C. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. So I've cut me a slice and typically I put various toppings on it. I'll make some kind of like frosting with like a protein chocolate sauce. My favorite sauce at the moment though is PB2 powder and sugar-free Mrs. Butterworth maple syrup. I like to mix it together like so. And this is good because it's not as sweet as the regular syrup either. But again, it doesn't have a weird like aftertaste to it. When I serve it to people, they don't even know that it's a sugar-free version. And then I just like to spread it over top. And then sometimes I'll slice some fruit or chop up some nuts. I typically like to sprinkle some walnuts on it. Mm. So on to the next snack. Typically for this snack, I like to have my homemade bread. I love making bread at home, especially whole wheat bread with various like grains. Spelt bread is one of my favorites. Instead of doing all the manual labor of like kneading the bread, girl, bread makers. If you didn't have one, you need to get up on it. They're literally like 150 bucks I think I spent for this. I just kind of grabbed the cheapest one. I was like, whatever. And it works like a charm. All you literally have to do is put all the ingredients into the bread maker. It mixes it. it needs it, it rises it, and bakes it according to what crust you want. So you can click light crust or medium crust or dark crust. Three hours later, you have a bread. That's it. You just throw everything in and it's done. How awesome is that? So this is a bread that I made. It has like oat and flax, a little bit of cornmeal, a little bit of millet, whole wheat, spelt. Basically, I just took all the grains and threw it up in there <laughs> and put it into the bread maker. And I find that whatever recipe you choose works pretty well. And I like to have some sort of toast. My favorite toast that I've been wanting these days all the time is hummus toast, okay? I've been crazy for hummus, hummus and veggies, hummus and bread, hummus and salad, hummus and... And I love to make my own hummus at home. So I'll show you how I make my hummus and then we'll have some hummus toast and I'll show you a few little snacks. Okay, come on, let's go. 
boom, you got your prepared chickpeas. Don't hate me, I never have measured out exactly how much stuff I put in my hummus, so I have no idea. I just know what it looks like. I fill up about half of the chickpeas with tahini. I was supposed to pick up lemons, but see what had happened was pregnancy brain, so I forgot, but luckily I've got this fake <laughs> lemon juice at home. And then I just pour it on for a few seconds. One, two, three. And then I'm going to take some paprika and I'm going to dump it on like so. I love paprika. Then I take some cumin and then I take some minced garlic. I love garlic. So I put about this much and this particular can of chickpeas is already slightly salted. So I won't need that much, just, just a little bit. And then because I'm not using oil, I do put a little water and you can put it in the food processor. But nowadays I find the immersion blender works wonders. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we've got hummus. And so I'll just taste it as I'm mixing it and add more things. Oh, it's a table. <gasps> so we're just gonna use fresh bread without toasting it. Gets a good amount of hummus on there. Mm. Today I'm just putting some lettuce and like little fried garlic flakes, a little bit of onion. Let's bite it. Mmm, so delicious. So this is like a second snack that I would have for today. I really like these rye crisps. It's from Finland, but I really like them dipped in hummus. They're pretty good. So you know carrots and hummus, you guys know, but you might be like, what is this? In Korea, these are called oi gochu. They're not spicy, but they're kind of crunchy like cucumbers. You guys know that I have a slight cucumber allergy. So I kind of use them in replacement of cucumber and like salads and stuff. They taste really good in hummus. In Korea, people will typically dip it in fermented bean paste or fermented red paste. Fabulous. And let's move on to dinner. So because I can only have small portions at a time, I typically take my dinner at two different times. Like I have dinner a little bit early and then a few hours later I have dinner again. When you have twins, apparently you need an extra 50 grams of protein on top of the protein that you already need for the day already. And as somebody who already needed about 80 to 100 because I still do my weight training, that means I have to push like so much protein and I don't think I get nowhere near enough. So for dinner, I like to make sure that I have some sort of fish. These days I've really been liking a fish in Korea called kajami, which I looked it up in English because I don't know if we even eat that fish, but it's called S-O-L-E. I don't know if it's pronounced sole, sole, like Cirque du Soleil. I'm just gonna call it kajami. And all I do is I literally pop it into the air fryer for six minutes and I eat it with frozen vegetables. It takes like 10 minutes to prepare. Simple, delicious, healthy. Let's go. Moon and I, we found this sauce, this spicy Korean seasoning. We found it when we were on one of our various weekend baby moon trips, but it's so good. We literally put it on everything and it has salt in it already. So you don't even need to salt it. So I'm just gonna put some on the fish. And then this only needs to go in the air fryer at 200 for five to six minutes, cause it's very thin. So I'll typically have two of them at once. Let's put it in. So this is our amazing air fryer. It's cool cause it has steam ability. So you fill this up with water and it even has a mode for dumplings, mandu. And after it steams the dumplings, it air fries them. So they get steamed and then crispy at the end, just all in one, you click a button. So convenient. Anyway, right now we're going to pop this in. We got the grilling pan in. So I'm gonna just spray it with some sprayable avocado oil so it doesn't stick. Just going to take the fish and pop it in. Six minutes. While we're waiting for the fish, we can prepare the veggies. So I used to always get all the fresh veggies, cut them up, put them up and mix them together. I've opted for frozen vegetables some of the time. These I actually get from Ikea. And they actually taste pretty good. It's a mixture of quinoa, broccoli, and pumpa, whatever pumpa is. I don't know what that is, but it tastes good, <laughs> whatever it is. I think it means pumpkin. Swedish people, is that right? I'm just gonna take this, heat it up, and just wait for the fish to be done. Okay, so then you can just take it pop it on top of your veggies and you're done. So I typically would make some kind of sauce and then like make it all like nice. In pregnancy, I've really been wanting this hot sauce. So I'm gonna put this hot sauce on it. The fish is so nice. I was informed it's called so fish, not so lay. So lay is much more fun to say. Mm. And these Ikea vegetables are so good. They don't have much seasoning besides a little bit of salt, but I find that that's perfect for this. Mm. Now on to dessert. 
I don't eat dessert every day, but sometimes I do crave and want certain things. In the case of when you're pregnant with twins, your chances of like gestational diabetes and preeclampsia, things that are very dangerous, you know, for the babies in your stomach are much higher. So the doctor has me like really watching my weight. When it comes to dessert, I make sure that I'm getting um, things that aren't like, you know, loaded with sugar and stuff like that. So I opt for like kind of the protein version of things. First thing that I'll have for dessert, if I am gonna have one, is this ice cream that Korea has called Lara Sweet. It's kind of like in America, we have Halo Top ice cream, which like has very little calories and like no added sugars and stuff like that. It's that. So my favorite one is chocolate. So a whole pint is 280 calories. In one serving is 100 milliliters. There's 60 calories, 11 grams of carbs, two grams of sugar, one gram of fiber, four grams of protein. So if you eat the whole thing, you'll be getting what? Like double that roughly almost triple that. So even if you do decide to eat the whole pint of ice cream, it's only 280 calories, no added sugars, just some fiber and protein. And it tastes amazing. It doesn't have any sort of weird flavor or anything. And recently they came out with actually an ice cream bar, but the ice cream bar is just so nice. It's double the size. I just, I cut it in half because I ate half of one yesterday. But one of these bars is 125 calories. Again, no like added sugars, but this one has like 10 grams of fiber in it and more protein and it tastes really good. And I like that you can open it up. So sometimes I'll open it up and add like PB2 powder or peanut butter in it, <laughs> even though it tastes good without it. And another thing that I've been addicted to is these ice things. In Korea, they have ice that's flavored, but it's not with added sugar. And when you go to baseball games in Korea, they always sell them like outside because it's like a nice, cool, like kind of refreshing thing to have. And I, I first discovered it at a baseball game. Korean baseball games are lit. They have cheerleaders and everything, y'all. But this mojito lime flavored ice, I've been so addicted to. Literally, I've been having it like every day. So nice. Or if I just pass the freezer, I'll just come. You know, I'm just gonna have a little bit. Mmm. And oftentimes I make desserts at home, so I'll make sure that what I'm making is like, you know, with no added sugar, or maybe I make something with almond flour, you know, things like that. I just make healthy versions of desserts as opposed to just eating the sugar and like refined flour. Of course, occasionally, maybe like every two weeks or so, I'll go out with friends or with Mr. Moon and we'll go and like have an indulgent day. But overall, I've been keeping it really healthy because that's what the doctor keeps on saying, girl, I keep it healthy anyway. That Lada Sweet exists. If you are in Korea and you're looking for a healthier ice cream, you can get it on Coupon, you can get it on B-Mart, okay? Sometimes they sell it at like Lotte Mart and stuff like that. Please go get it. And that's about it. I hope that this video gave you a great insight into how I've been eating since I've been pregnant. If you have any other questions about the pregnancy or the twins, then let me know in the description box down below. If you like this video and you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe to my YouTube page, which is down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, not on Snapchat, because I don't use that no more. Like me on Facebook, and we three will see ya. Oh, I'm so exhausted after filming this video. <laughs> Nap time.